Hey, Lucas here for Hanabi Glass. Today I'm going to show you a very basic implosion pendant. It's really simple and pretty much foolproof. Anyway, let's get started. All right, so this is what we're going to be making. It's a very basic implosion pendant. The way we do it will actually make the center much higher than the sides. And here it is. You can see it nicely. We don't put a background on it for this time. It's, as I said, very simple, very basic, but it's probably the best place to start. Here's what you're gonna need. A paddle, maybe. Depends on what you wanna do. Some tweezers, those are usually handy to have around. Right here, I'm using 30 millimeter tube, but any size will work. Four millimeter rod, some punties, and I'm gonna be using Butterscotch and Dark Cobalt, also known as Silver Strike 3 and Cobalt 5, as well as my Zippo. All right, let's get going. So the very beginning here, what I like to do is heat up the center and pull out some of the glass. You can add it if you want, but the chances are is it will give you a weird optical effect if you add glass, so it's easier just to pull it off. So as you're spinning, you'll heat up a rod any size you want. I pretty much use four millimeter because it's what I've got a lot of. Find about center and as you're spinning, then pull a little bit out and you'll get a really good spot to mark your center. It really does help quite a bit. You don't have to, but it makes life a lot easier. So here's my butterscotch or silver strike something or other from Glass Alchemy. They're basically the same colors. You can do whatever pattern you want. The general idea is, is to create concentric circles. You can put the dots in between them. You can do whatever you want to do. I, one thing I do recommend is not putting lots and lots of dark dots next to each other because they'll sort of get lost within the pattern. So you'll notice that I sort of intersperse these throughout the entire thing. And one of the big parts about this specific way of doing an implosion that makes life easy is you're starting out with everything being exact same thickness, you don't, you're not blowing up a bubble, you just close a tube and make the front of it equally thick as the rest of the tube. Which will help so much when you are melting later. So I'm doing a little bit more spacing here to allow for some lines I want to draw. All of the dots that I have on the front part of this are going to be very deep within the pendant. Once you get to the edge of the tube that is flat, 
that is where all of the dots, lines, whatever you want to do for this specific style with melting will be a lot more shallow depth in the finished piece. So up until you get up to the shoulder or the part where it starts being the exact same diameter as the rest of the tube, most of those dots will be fairly deep within Obviously, the center ones are going to be the most deep, but this is something I'll talk about in other videos when I do some different versions of implosions. And here, I'm gonna just draw down some lines. I'm gonna to try to get them as close to equal all the way around, and you'll notice I stop and reheat everything because I kinda of didn't think about that beforehand, but it's a good idea to keep everything nice and warm so no cracks happen. Anyway, back to the lines. Try to get them equal length. The nice part about this style as well, since these are going to be on the edge of the pendant and we're not gonna melt it all the way to a single point. If you're, you know, a millimeter, half millimeter off, it's not gonna hurt the actual look of the pendant. It's pretty forgiving like that. And once again, like I said, this is pretty basic and definitely the best place to start for making some nice cabs, pendants, whatever you're gonna plan on using them for, marbles or the like. So anyway, just doing some more with the caramel, caramel, however you wanna pronounce it. Then we'll be doing some dark cobalt ones in between. And I will start talking once again and explaining a bit more when we're coming to the melting. Okay, now that we got that done, one of the really nice parts about these pendants or cabs is that you don't need to blow anything up. There's zero blowing that happens whatsoever after you started putting on the dots. All you need to do is focus the heat at the center of the first dots you laid. Just make sure that you're melting it evenly Take your time, switch hands up so they don't get tired, but all you're doing is keeping your heat across the front of that tube. It's gonna melt, it's gonna gather up, it's gonna do this all naturally, and since we're working with some color changers, try to work with it in a neutral flame so that you can strike it later. If you're not working with some color changers, don't really worry too much. I'd say hit the oxidizing flame just so that you don't have to worry about anything that might have some chrome in it. But right here, I've got it set pretty well right in the neutral part of my flame. It's hard to tell because of the angle I've got the camera at. I just wanted you all to be able to actually see what I'm doing when I was putting the dots on. Anyway, the heat is just across the front. I've got my hand angled down maybe 
five degrees, 10 degrees, letting gravity help me out here. As you can see there, I'm just checking to make sure that all of the stuff is melting as well as I'd like. And I also grab the paddle just to cool it down a little bit. The cooling down in the center allows the cooler glass to implode better. I don't do it a lot on these specific pendants, but every once in a while it is kind of nice to help out. And there we go, you can see it cooling down. I'll give you a quick look. So you see how the lines are all the way down at the bottom right there. It's, and you could implode it more if you really want, but the optics at this point will hide any different lengths that you ended up having the lines at. So they'll just look really nice no matter what. Give yourself a nice cool attachment there. If you're planning on directly adding it to a piece, you can do a hot seal with some colored glass or whatever. Right here now, I have the heat right on the edge where the pendant cab is going in. Get a nice even heat. What we're gonna do is blow it up thin, blow a hole out and flame cut it, which will be another technique I believe that I haven't actually done a video for, so I'll have to do that. Give it a good puff pull as you're blowing and pop. Now turn toward the hole and it'll cut really easily. Again, like I said, I'll do a better video that shows that later. Now grab yourself some four millimeter, five millimeter, whatever rod you're comfortable with. And you're gonna heat it and you're gonna turn it away from yourself as you pull the glass off. All you're doing is just ripping it off, getting it as thin or as close to the surface as possible. Try to do it with a relatively soft flame because you don't want to have a line show up where you have pulled off all of the clear glass. This part is going to take some time, so you're going to need to have some patience. Don't get it too hot. Make sure you just take your time and melt it till it becomes nice and round. If you want a nice high magnification effect after you melt it, just allow it to slump or, you know, basically hold the back of your hand more down so you got a nice angle to it but there's another way of doing the melting which I will show in another video that I personally prefer because glass does have a bit of a memory and it will show off ripped ripped off areas and things like that so the trick is to make sure everything is fully melted anyway as I said that will be another video down the road so here we are, I'm just gonna melt it all in and I'll show you right at the end what we are and you've actually in fact seen the pictures and the videos at the beginning of this one.
Uh, thanks for watching. This is just one of multiple implosion marbles I'll be doing videos for. It's the first and the easiest, so it's a good place to start. Anyway, make sure to check out our Instagram, as well as I'm streaming on Twitch once a week. And don't forget to drop on by our Discord if you have any questions or any videos or techniques you'd like to see me make. And last but not least, drop on by our website to check what's available. Anyway, thank you for watching.